Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. Hey, Craig. What's up, gang? I'm Brandon. <laughs> nice to finally. Sometimes I, I feel bad about making it sound like all I do is chase people, like people don't like me, but sometimes I feel like all I do is chase people. And you and I have had several near misses. Um, so far, my favorite was the time I was planning to fly to Boulder to do a whole bunch of interviews, and a giant storm closed my airport for a day, and I lost all these people. And I was like, oh, I finally was going to get to Brandon's. And, and we were kind of planning, uh, kind of tentatively, we had talked about doing a, let's do a dual bitch about podcasting, where we'll just record one show and we'll just talk all about podcasting and then release it on both of our projects. But um, that never came to pass. So the thing that I, I mean, I'm curious about too many things, but I only know what little that I do know of you. I only know you as like Brandon the podcaster. So probably the very first time I ever heard of you um, was the first time I found Height Drop. And I probably, if I remember correctly, I found Height Drop like after you had done a bunch of the, like the version zero, version one of the show. And I had found that I was like, oh, a dead show. Cause I'm a huge believer in like, the way we defend the thing we love is if everybody just, you know, like we have nine podcasts made by people who do parkour and we have nine clothing, everything is all Mm. grassroots. So I was like, Oh, the show is dead. And then it came back to life. So, but that's all I know. It's like what you, what you do. And I I can't listen to them all, but I've listened to a bunch of them and I'm, but that's the only brand that I know. And I know that my, my first person experience is no matter how much you try to be honest, I'm still presenting a certain version of Craig. I don't bring all my dirty laundry with me to the show. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess my, the thing I want to pull on first is what, you know, what do I probably have wrong about you? If the only version of you that I know is the audio version, you know, or if I watch a video, like what what do I probably miss that you're really like, no, there's more to me. (laughs) That's a great question. Um, First of all, I'm actually super stoked. And one thing you should know is I don't like to use the word stoked, but I end up using it often enough because (laughs) it just fits. But I'm super happy that you know me as Brandon, the podcaster, because as much as um, I've, you know, I've actually liked that. I like being identified by that almost more than my movement in some ways. And most people aren't, you know, interested in my podcast as much as they know me as the parkour dude in my world and at least my experience of it. So it's really cool for someone to know me more as this uh, podcaster in my head because it, it happens kind of rarely, I feel like. So Mm. that's awesome to me. But yeah, like you said, as you know, there is a certain degree of just, and that was actually one of the primary goals of my podcast when I first started it, when I first rebooted it, I should say, but definitely it's been a through line through the whole thing was getting to know who I am and getting Mm. face to face with that kind of public persona versus like authentic expression gap that can be just a little, uh, there's so, there's some distance there sometimes. And I was intrigued with what that is. And I felt like it was kind of a, a the next fear thing. You know, I'd gotten through a lot of fear challenges in parkour and that was what guided my practice in a lot of ways mm. uh, was trying to do things that I thought were scary. I thought that was a lot, there was a lot to be gained there. And then public speaking was always kind of a dream not really public speaking, but, um, you know, my heroes were all like comedians and, and podcasters. Oh, right, and right. so I thought that like, I should try to go in that domain and, and face some fear that way, because I felt like that was again, something that I wanted to do, but was scary, scarier to me even than most of the jumps and things that I, uh, hmm. was I'm going to go out on a limb and say, for. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you probably, um, dislike hearing your own work as much as I dislike hearing my own work. Like, can you, I can barely stand <laughs> to listen to like, I freak out. I'm just like, Oh my God, I did. what? I said what? Or like, uh, and I don't know if that's like, what, what are your thoughts? It on depends. That? It goes up and down. Sometimes I'm like that. Sometimes I'm definitely, I'll look back at podcasts and stuff. And like you said, there was a, there was an old version. So I don't know which ones you've listened to most of, but I would say like the very early beginning ones, those are the cringiest for me to listen to because I can really hear. How many years my, ago? Like what, which, which brand was that? I started in 2014. That? Yeah. 2014 so when I, was my initial, that was when I first began Height Drop. And, that's like eight years ago, right? That's like yeah, I, what, a quarter of your life, a fifth of your life? That's a, that's like a that, lot, yeah. right? That's a long time ago. It's pretty yeah. significant. Sorry, um, I derailed your train change. of thought. No, 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 you're good. It was just, that's when I was uh, most confident and least conscious, I would say about what I was doing on the mic. And that was cool 
because that's kind of what I needed to get started, I think, yeah. was to be a little bit brash. But I listen to it now and I'm like, you're not really listening. You're like thinking you're really funny, but you're not so funny. <laughs> And you're not so interesting and you're not like, but whatever, you know, it's just like, Hey, uh, 20 something year old man. Yeah. There's full yeah, of physician, vinegar, as they say, feeling, feeling, feeling themselves. And I think as I grew along this journey, I've become more conscious, even self-conscious to the point of like insecure and like dealing with certain things about the mic that I, you know, that's when I was like, okay, now I'm really onto something. Cause this is actually super scary. Like the deeper I got, the more I realized I was even using some of my podcasts as like a therapeutic self. Um, I was like, Oh my God, what am I doing? I'm doing like therapy on, I like you caught me. But, so like, so like, uh, it's just interesting that again, as I was unconscious and becoming more conscious of what this podcast was doing for me, it was, it was actually like, uh, it's scarier along the way. I, I started to lose confidence, but I gained consciousness around um, what I was doing. And, and it's gotten me to a point now where I've gotten a lot less um, high volume in the terms of the episodes I'm producing. And I'm just trying to be more yeah. intentional. It's not that I didn't have a lot of fun. I want to have fun, but, you know, we talked about what, what has kept me in the game and, and movement and all these things is, is usually growth. And so I want to feel like I'm growing and so to a certain degree, it feels, it feels like I've done the volume and I've done certain modes of it mm. and I'm still trying to find my voice, you could say, but, um, all of that stuff put together, I would say to, to finish your question to round this out is you know, on top of, or next to all the stuff that I'm like, find cringy and stuff. There is times which I actually revel. I'm like this. Yes. Like, yes. I actually listen to myself and I'm like. I fucking like this guy. That's authentic. Like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, I like what he's saying. I, I mean, obviously it's me, but it's just like, I'm like, Oh yeah. Um, it's kind of weird in that regard too. Sometimes. Cause I go, all right, no, let's not get masturbatory with it, but it's just like, yeah, it's I, too much I, it actually has, gazing. <laughs> it's, it's actually been helpful to, to uh, reaffirm that like, okay, some of my thoughts aren't so well put together, but sometimes I like what I say. Mm. Um, it's not so cringeworthy. Um, I always make the joke. I don't know if anybody listens to my show. I know my mom doesn't even listen to my show. I'm, I'm thinking, <laughs> but I'm thinking there are not a lot of podcasters listening because there just aren't that many podcasters. I mean, there are millions and millions of podcasters, but there aren't, there aren't that many like in the movement space. I'm wondering if there's like, so you just, you're describing a lot there about how podcasting can be a tool you know, well, for self-therapy, but can also be a tool for self-reflection. And, you know, when you have 10 years of podcasts, it's like, you can look back and like, well, this is what I did 10 years ago. You can see it objectively. You can, mm -hmm. you can realize that your taste on how to edit and who to invite, all these things change. Uh, but I'm wondering if there's any suggestion we could give to people about like, all right, if you don't want to get into podca podcasting, which by the way, I recommend don't ever get into podcasting. It's a, it's a horrible, <laughs> evil mistress. <laughs> but are there things that we can say like, all right, but if you're listening to Craig and, you know, Brandon Yammer about how great, and I agree with you, by the way, on all those things, transformative, super useful for me. Oh my God, who the hell was I when I started? Are there things that we can say, well, you can get those same lessons or you can practice those things like some other way. Like, and I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on, have you figured out how to share some of those meta lessons that you got out of podcasting <clears throat> in like other formats i don't mean video versus audio i just mean like you know in a movement class or in yeah i mean question. that is not easy that's complicated <laughs> but i would say that that's like for sure with movement that was a uh, primary and it still is a primary way that i express myself and and heal myself i mean it's all i think part of getting to know yourself and maybe if you're someone like you or me that is uh, or, or an orator of sorts or somebody who likes to think out loud who benefits from uh, I forget the term, but it's like certain people, they need to talk through their thoughts, yes. their emotions. They need a place sometimes to do that. And a podcast can be a great play tool for, for someone like us, because <clears throat> in a way you can burden people if you're, if you're that way and they're not consenting to your thoughts. You <laughs> know? Right. Like, the supermarket. Not like, Hi, let me tell you my problems. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I think um, being, I, I didn't really know this about myself necessarily. Um, until even relatively recently, but like I, I, I appreciate having a space to have uh, just free reign on where I take my thoughts and discussion, and I think that mm. it's helpful for me enjoy that 
style of thinking and talking for other people. And I think it's great quality to, to cultivate in both ends of the spectrum here, but you might be way more deliberate with your, what you're going to say and when you're going to say it, you might be just a different style of thinker. And so, and a different style of um, contemplator or, you know, it's just, I think yeah. everyone's so unique and different that you couldn't prescribe something that's verbal to everybody. But like, I think that's one of the things that I've realized is that there's so many different languages that you can speak and movement is a language that you can speak. And within movement, there's all these little languages. You, you can lean towards the parkour side, for example, or you can lean towards the free running side. And, and you know, we all know what that division kind of means. And you can lean towards verbal or non-verbal communication. And there's like just so many dimensions. In fact, to plug my own brand here real quick, we got some new, we got some new um, merchandise that I dropped. And like, again, like you're saying, I don't really know if anyone listens or anyone cares. My podcast has had some serious dips in terms of the consistency. And so, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised if I'm not on anyone's radar right now, but I've developed uh, the new dimension line of merchandise around this concept of just there's so many different dimensions that you can look at your life and yourself and anything from and it's really helpful to make those distinctions about like what dimension are you actually measuring against because it gets really i think you know when we talked about that question being difficult it's like it's difficult because it's, it's hard to look at all these things from from uh, that are parts of different dimensions like verbal versus nonverbal, and then like what are you trying to get out of it anyways so mm. um, what i'm trying to say i guess is just you need to be sometimes really specific about what you're looking at and aware of what dimension you're actually uh I call that interfered with my audio <laughs> <laughs> my headphones are synced to my phone and my computer right now but Sorry about yeah, that. What, no, that's all good. So, like, you know, it's, it's hard to figure I'm out just, what dimension I was to just saying, to. And I hadn't formulated this, so this is a good little practice for me because I, I want to announce the. I'm checking to making sure that I can stand behind some of the merchandise. But basically, the concept is about this this idea of dimensions and that there's just so many dimensions um, that make up. You know, it, there's the three dimensions of movement, obviously, but the, mm. that's usually what we think of when we kind of truncate it there. But I think that there's literally infinite like subtler dimensions about people's personalities and, and what you're trying to get out of life and your your practice of parkour or your yeah. you know expression through podcasting and all this and so experimentation was key for me and i think it's just like where are you finding the growth if you're if you're going to try to do something something novel is a good place to start but yeah um, I, I would say definitely um Sorry, I, I kind of take notes for my own personal reference, and I'm like, every once in a while I look down, and I'm like, I need to be writing. <laughs> so, um, I'm torn. I, I like, I pause, I look up to my left, and I'm like, oh, so many things to ask, and so little time <laughs> remaining. Um, let's let's go a little bit more, just because people may love to hear more about the podcasting part of it. Can you share some? I love to talk to other podcasters. I have a whole nother project and a whole nother podcast where I do just that. I love to talk about, talk to podcasters and ask them things like, tell me about some experiences that you've had. I'm going to say behind the mic. And I don't just mean like, oh my God, they told me about the skeleton in the closet. I, I mean like a situation where you tried something um, and it, and it paid off wildly better than you were thinking. And maybe that is like, I experimented with, uh, with somebody that I didn't know that I'd be able to communicate with. Like I've had conversations with mothers about motherhood and, and I'm just like, I got no frame of reference here. I got no shared experience. And just like throwing myself in there was like a wonderful learning experience just to have a conversation and, and spend a lot of time going, I don't know. Well, what do you think? Um, so those mm -hmm. kinds of things, don't, you don't have to have like that exact answer, but those well, I would say things. the one that comes to mind immediately for me is doing a solo podcast. So mm. oh, I, I committed at one time, <laughs> they're the worst, man. they're so fun, that. but they're also, so, so for me, that was like, uh, at least at one phase of the, of pipe drop, I was like, all right, I'm doing them every week. If I can't find a guest, I'm just going to do it myself. And I think those are the first few times I ever did, uh, just a solo blast is what I called them. And that was a, a really cool experience for me because I realized I could do it. You know, I had fun doing it. I didn't realize how much fun I would have doing it. And it was definitely kind of nerve wracking. Um, but there's a lot of power in kind of publishing those episodes that you're actually unsure about. And 
just kind of, for me at least, that was, again, that was something that I really valued was being able to, to hit publish in the same way that like you kind of accept before you do a big roof gap or something, <laughs> yeah. you know, all the things that can go wrong, but you're like, okay, you've made your peace with it. And now you hundred percent commit and you go yeah, forward. No and it's for kind that. of the same kind of release <laughs> with that, with an episode just being like, all right, I'm there's, there's fears and things that you can have surrounding putting yourself out there creatively. And then just being like, I'm going for it anyways mm. and whatever, just putting it out there. And, and then, you know the feedback can be good or bad but uh, i think just being at a good place where it doesn't matter to you when you hit publish is where i, I like to be mm. what the feedback is at least but of course if the feedback is good it, it's 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 even more amazing you know when i hear people that have listened to stuff it's it's funny to me that um I'll still get a really big kick out of it if somebody knows like an obscure reference from the podcast yeah i the you didn't ask, but the funniest one ever happened to me was I was standing in somebody's Friendsgiving party. You know, so in a room with like 40 people. This is like in the before times. I'm in this room full of people and I'm just standing there and somebody walks in the front door. And so I just have a habit of like talking to people. So he, this person walked up to me and I said, hello, I'm Craig. And he went, oh, that Craig, like actually recognized the way that I was like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. wow, that's surreal. And it, and that's when you realize that like, ooh, you know, these audio files, they do go out there and pieces of software copy them around the world and people press play. And it's, um, it really makes you realize how powerful the medium is. Um, and I, I've, I've been thinking, I, I had a conversation with another podcaster who, and, and I'm going to apologize up front because this is a cool idea and it's probably going to give you more ideas and give you more things to try. She has, for her podcast, she grabs five different people for a season, does 25 episodes, five episodes with the same guest. So you, as a listener, you hear five separate conversations, fairly short, like I think they're like a half hour-ish, but you're listening to like, you know, Brandon and Craig talk, you know, five times over the course of like a whole six or eight months of the season. And it's a whole different way to like, you know, this show is intentionally drag race format, zero to 60, and then the airbag goes off at the end at 20 minutes. And it's my way of making it so people can get here so we can do it, like make it, what's the simplest thing that could possibly result in it being published. Um, and then the other end of the mover's mindset spectrum, I do these giant open-ended two hour monstrous things that, you know, who would, you know, holy crap. Um, <laughs> and just this idea of like, yeah, but what if I had like single serving size conversations, you know, with one person over and over. Uh, so my question here, you know, and reaching in my hat is, have you considered any other like really off the wall or unusual formats or things you'd thought about doing with podcasting that you went, yeah, I'm, I don't want to go there or. No, well, that I didn't want to do. Well, that you um, didn't do, or you can't figure out how to or do, or the, like it's impossible. I, I've to got do, a few or... ideas. Like, I mean, I, I definitely look to other podcasts. Like, you know, I'm a ham. I'm, if you've listened to certain episodes, you'll know that I'm a pretty big MMA fan. Yes. And one very popular podcast in the MMA world is Ariel Hawani. He has like a podcast where he interviews several people in the world of fighting, often fighters, all in. He calls it the MMA hour. It's like a four-hour podcast, but it's broken up so that all these guests are on the same show and they do it live. So. Sometimes they can even comment on the, you know, if there's a, something that the previous guest said, mm, they can go back it's and just forth. like a, it's an interesting, I think that would be, that's a powerful format because you get, um, you just get like a, almost a community feel, even though it's still a one-on-one -on -one thing. So you don't get people talking over each other, interrupting. There's a little bit more of like, who's going to appear on this episode, but it's logistically, it could be a nightmare because you have to now schedule people all to kind of, you know, the way he does it, it's pretty high production um, value, <laughs> but it would, it would, it's a, it's a really cool format. I think if you could get multiple people on the same episode and do it live, you know, and live podcasting in general, I've done a few live episodes. That's hard, but it's, it's a cool format to work with. I think um, mostly that's the one. That's the one I think is like interesting, but you know, I haven't done that one. And, um, you know, there's, there's other ideas, but they, they mostly feel like gimmicks and stuff. Like I'm like, okay, I could, uh, I could do like, you know, something at height, like actually like try to record the podcast, like, you know, it's just <laughs> a, like, like the chicken wing, the wood, the whatever Buffalo wing guy that he yeah. does, you know, his little interviews that way where I'm like, you could do a parkour podcast like that potentially where, someone's doing jumps along the way, I guess. But again, you're not just sitting there doing chicken wings. So yeah, 
it logistically doesn't necessarily work to have a parkour version of that you know yeah. it's i've like always could, wanted to do a, a version with uh, wireless lav mics and have somebody you know hold the recorder and then walk and talk with somebody and then actually have the opportunity to mm -hmm. be able to move you know as you come across pocket parks or movement spaces and like spend you know an hour and a half hanging out with somebody and then whatever movement comes up we're, we're still free to, relatively free to move even though you have you're wired up with mics but that's yeah. like a lot of logistics to go there and i hear and see things <laughs> and you know like i look at a uh, two people talking interview visual and I'm just like this is amazing and then you watch for a few minutes and I'm like yeah and there's at least five camera angles I see here so that's five humans plus a uh, you know the visual <laughs> director then there's a director there's at least two people holding boom mics I can just hear it I see no labs like you know it's like okay so that's nine ten there's eleven people here plus him plus the guest you know and that's Robert Downey Jr. for crying out loud you know like, <laughs> you kind of get your yeah. head on straight about whoa okay high production value yeah and just yeah just right now I'd, I'd like I like running lean. I, I prefer to have people in studio, but with COVID, that kind of has been shut down almost completely. And yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to do, but it's. I think really the even the medium of podcasting as a concept is pretty saturated, pretty um, derivative. I would say, you know, unfortunately, in yeah. a lot of ways, like I think, like I pull a lot of what I do from yeah. you know, how much Rogan more new stuff can we invent and. And it's just a curious time because there is so much shit out there and there's so many things out there on the internet and there's so many um, people to listen to and people just putting out like the model is to just, you know, be super consistent with your content. I'm not so sure that that it's the best thing anymore to follow I the model. Agree. I think to stand out, you might have to do like really a different um, approach. Nobody gives more... a shit what day I published. <laughs> episode 72 a year and a half ago they don't care whether <laughs> i did it on the wednesday or the thursday yeah i agree with you on that that's yeah it's the quality is king content is king all right well as much as i hate to say it i'm watching the time spin by on my stopwatch so i'm just gonna like pull the ripcord and say okay and, and of course the final question three words to describe your practice all right final question here three words mm. hyphens are free you can my <laughs> Yeah, we'll give for hyphens and we can double up. Um, let's see. I'm going to sit on it and just let him come here for a second. But aggressive is my first word. <laughs> I know that because I was injured often enough <laughs> to become aware <laughs> of the that style. Um, I hate using this word, but I'm going to say it anyway, spiritual, because it's like, for me, it's a lot to talk about and it gets kind of quickly, you know, doesn't sound so um, well articulated. I think when you talk about things that are spiritual, but there's a lot of meaning behind, you know, what I look at, what I get out of my practice when I look back on it. And when I've been at like those key moments where I'm doing really big things like for me i don't know that you know everyone is like this and i don't necessarily think it's the best way to do it because i don't actually put parkour on like a huge pedestal but i think that movement in general is a kind of a sacred you know thing and i see parkour as a martial art and i see the like the discipline side of it as like really important so maybe disciplined is a better um word actually or maybe that'll be my third word disciplined and i think like yeah basically that means that you're a student you know i would say a constant yeah. student um i don't know if you i forget but if you trace the word discipline back it's just like someone who learns or something like that i think it is i, I gotta re-up on that one but those are my three words well, i think those are three great I'll words i them. I love, well, you know what to stand by them. It's just those are the three words today at 1230 on my time. Um, yeah. I like the juxtaposition of spiritual and discipline. Like they pull and together, I think they create something that's better than either of them would be alone. So, I, but I try not to judge people's three words, but I think those are three great words. Um, Brandon, uh, if it wasn't obvious, it was a distinct pleasure. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you very much for having me on your podcast and much thanks to anyone who's listened.